now we will be understanding what is masked language modeling uh, that is a first problem statement in uh, pre training part so uh, let's first of all understand how uh, <clears throat> the training data set is prepared so the entire idea of mass language modeling is that we would be uh, masking out a few tokens randomly in the input sentences so as you can see that uh, i am masked boy i am a smart boy so the word smart can be masked she loved masked with chocolate mask that means these tokens are getting masked randomly the entire idea of mass language modeling is that we would be masking out some random tokens and eventually we would be training the model to determine these mass tokens so if we feed in this sentence this particular sentence what uh, the model should be able to predict probabilities for this particular masked tokens in that so uh, in the entire data set the, uh, for 80 percent of the data we would be masking out random tokens in the sentences for the remaining 10 percent we would be replacing uh, tokens uh, certain tokens with random tokens uh, he's uh, he is cake best friend he is my best friend so my is replaced by cake bus love each other they love each other so we are replacing they with bus so this can be random tokens getting uh, uh, getting replaced and no alteration the remaining 10 percent he is my best friend they love each other so the model can get three types of inputs uh, having one token mass at any position 80 percent of the to 80 percent of the input would be something like that 10 in 10 percent of the cases we would be replacing uh, certain tokens with random tokens as you can see bus love each other uh, and uh, he is my cake best friend etc and no change in the remaining 10 percent of the input data now uh, a question comes in ki, what is the significance of mass language modeling so remember in the point where we were discussing that BERT is a bi-directional training model uh, and transformers are not so why is it so uh, so this is because of mass language modeling so if you notice in case of transformers, what we were doing is that uh, we were trying to predict the next token given the previous tokens. So it was unidirectional. You don't have information from the uh, of the from the future. So, but in case of BERT, what we are doing is that we are training the model with masking certain tokens randomly. So in that case, we also know which tokens are present ahead of the token and which tokens are present behind that token. In this case, the model is able to learn from both the directions. But in case of uh, a transformer which is a unidirectional mo uh, training model uh, we, we mask out the future tokens that the model hasn't seen if you remember uh, masked multi-headed attention definition that we discussed in my last video so in that case uh, if uh, if we are at a position 3 uh, in predicting certain sequence so the model is not able to see 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th uh, tokens that are present in the future but in case of BERT as you know ki we are uh, masking out random tokens so uh, the model is provided with information from the future tokens as well. Ki what are the few, uh, tokens present ahead of it and what are the tokens present behind of it. And this is help, this helps us in bi-directional training of the model. Also, uh, there can be a question that why do we need three different types of input like mass, random, uh, like we are masking certain sentences, we are replacing random tokens and in some of them we are not changing anything. Uh, so uh, as I told you uh, that BERT uh, in but the pre-training part is majorly to understand the language model right but eventually we would be fine-tuning it as well what will happen is that if we would train the entire model just on masking certain tokens the model will uh, some uh, will certainly bias on certain problems and it might not be able to uh, perform pretty well on certain particular tasks so like uh, in uh, in certain tasks we won't be having any masking happening so in that case the model may overfit on if we just uh, provide with mass tokens for 100% of the data set. That is why we are bringing out some sort of a randomness in the data set so that the model doesn't overfit on mass language modeling problem only. So let's understand the MLM model structure. Uh, most of the things are pretty easy. Uh, we are not doing much of the things. So eventually the core BERT remains the same. Uh, assume that we are trying to uh, predict for Paris is a beautiful mask. I love Paris. So we need to uh, predict for mask. This is the input that we are giving. It goes into this BERT architecture. If you remember, I told you in BERT large, we have 12 encoder uh, in BERT base or uh, in BERT base. In BERT, we have multiple en uh, encoder blocks that four layers that we repeat uh, every time. Uh, so uh, here we are. So encoder one, encoder two, encoder three represent those particular blocks. Now, once it passes through BERT, uh, we get certain sort of embeddings for each of the token that we have now we know what is the position for the mask token 
eventually we will apply softmax plus fnn uh, feed forward network ffn to get the probability for all the possible tokens so here you can see that so once we have applied bert we are applying two more layers softmax uh, we are applying activation function softmax plus feed forward network and eventually we are getting probability for the most apt token that should replace the masking so if we run through the uh, example the input is paris is a beautiful city i love paris taken as an input the input text sequence is tokenized using word piece so we have tokenized this uh, sequence the next step would be city is masked and cls and sep tokens are added so as you can see city is masked in the example and cls and and sep tokens are added the three embeddings token uh, token positional and segment embeddings are generated and added together this merged embedding is uh, fed to bert base if you remember where we have 12 uh, code blocks getting repeated so in case of transformers we have just 6 in case of bert base we have 12 a tension vector is generated for each token and embedding for the r the mask token that has been generated that is used to determine what should be the apt word for here 